just downloaded Ubuntu 17.10 and have played with it just a few minutes here. I've taken a couple of notes. I want to go through and do one of my quick looks at a distro short answer. I think it's great. So let's go ahead, jump right into it. I like to start with some just really, really basic things here. None of this gets really deep. It's just talking about basic usability. Let's look at my favorite, new folders. Makes it real easy. I don't really like that you have to name the folder first, but that's not that big of a deal. If you're creating a bunch of folders, that would go ahead and slow the process down a bit, but not that big of a deal. I think that works works fine. You can rename them just fine. Let's go ahead and hit rename. One thing I don't like, notice where it's going behind the dock right here. And so here I could see it if I'm naming it something, but if I'm doing one right here and I hit rename, it's going behind stuff. You can't see it well, so that's just not done well at all. But if I'm renaming multiple ones, this was kind of a surprising thing and kind of nice. Hit rename, and I could go ahead and call it a yeah, folder, put a space after it. It warns you that it's not going to be uni a unique name, so you can't even rename it up there. The buttons tend to be up at the top. So I could add yeah, numbers after it. It gives me the names right there, tells me what's going to be renamed, and boom, it works. That's really nice. If you go ahead and get those, throw them into the trash. So I like the trash icon, works well, you can see it. You can go ahead and empty the trash. And it does give you that warning. I expected that I would go to properties and it would allow me to turn off that warning. I don't see that there. Still works fairly well. This whole thing is simple, but functional. If I open up this folder here, folders look nice. They have your favorites right here. You can actually I'm going to click this first time, other locations, okay, I could add things to it. I don't know, can I just drag and drop into here? I suppose I shouldn't be testing as I do this. Um, new bookmark, there we go, so I could do that. I assume I could go ahead and remove it and rename it. So, real easy to work with. It is a little odd, I think. That's good, let's go. Oh, it's not letting me hit back? Okay, I'll go back to desktop. This right here, to get to the different views, you have to just cycle through them. Not that big of a deal. And there's this right here with menus, and you can go ahead and sort, do things like that, change size, print. I think overall that works well. Is it simple? Works well. I did notice if I open up another window, oh, clicking on here doesn't open up another window unless you tell it to open up a new window. Snap works. That's a personal preference of mine. I really like Snap, and it works great here. So let's see. Going back to the dock, with this rename, with that showing up behind it, well, maybe I want the dock to be on the bottom. Can't just right click on it and move it there. But what I can do is there's settings up here. At first I thought these were different icons and like this would give me volume and this would give me power, things of that nature. But they're all going to give you the same thing. Wherever you click there, it's all one big icon. The volume works well. You could use your scroll bar to scroll up and down. I like that. And I can go to settings right here, whichever, whichever I click up there. This is laid out nice. I'll click on dock. And let me go ahead, actually, before we move it to the bottom, I'm going to hit auto hide dock. Well, that's kind of stupid. It puts things behind the dock right there. And they don't hide unless you have other windows open. So that's not done particularly well. The icon sizing works great. Moving to the bottom, super easy to do. Anyone can figure that out. Um, yeah, so it might be nice if you could right click on it, but works well. I'm going to, just to keep it, stock, I will have it there on the left hand side. Other settings, I haven't gone through all of them, but they seem to be fine. I will say moving up and down them, you have to hit enter to get it to show. Not a big deal. If you move up and down with the arrows, let's see, if I go ahead and I want to add something else to this, I could show applications, which by the way, I think this is nice. These are things I've opened. I could show all. Works real well. Say I wanted to open up, um, oh, let's go ahead. I wanted, I'll go to all, and I wanted to put LibreOffice Calc over there. You'd think I would be able to just drag and drop it over. Does not work. I can right click though and say add to favorites. So not a big deal. Just seems like it would be something you would expect. And up here, it keeps giving you notifications. If I remove it, I know I'm removing it from favorites and it's going to give me a notification. Probably a place where I could have settings to turn that on and off. Then again, not a big deal. Overall, very happy with it. One other thing on the dock, yes, I knew there was something else. 
If I open up mul multiple folders, they have the little dot right there, sort of Mac-like. But what I really like is they will go ahead, the more windows I open, the more dots. So even if I have these minimized, boom, they get minimized. Might be nice to have it where you'd have the option to minimize it in a separate place so you could open windows. But you mouse over this, or you click on it, and you could see each one. And it tells you right there, you can see them, and you can see the four dots. If I do more than four, that's a maximum that it will do, but I can right click and it will say quit five windows. So it'll tell you right there how many windows you have open. Really nice feature. That's a nice little touch shows they're thinking about how to make things easier. Let's go ahead and open some programs. I'm going to go ahead, open LibreOffice. I will open up a text program and I will say add to favorite. So once you open it, it's real easy. It tells you again right there, I've opened it. I will open up Firefox and Rhythmbox. And now I have multiple programs open. This is not super fast. That's not the fault of Ubuntu. I am on a virtual machine. In fact, I could jump over to my Mac and we'll actually look at that in just a moment. I could jump back. So this is running on a Mac and a virtual machine. All of them have similar looks. All of them have a menu up here. And one thing that I like, LibreOffice has always been sort of an odd duck on, on Ubuntu in that it always says, exit. But here it says quit. Now it does say quit LibreOffice. If we look at other programs, they just say quit. But if I go back to LibreOffice, file, exit here, quit. But it's easy enough now. You can tell someone this is how you quit. Preferences, that will show up on all of them and most programs will have that. Firefox does not. I don't think, oh I guess yeah, for its preferences you have to come over here. If I'm on Rhythm box. Oh, it doesn't have, oh, I don't, I think it doesn't, no, it doesn't have preferences over here. So yeah, they're not all there, but a lot of programs you have the preferences here and you have help and about and quit. If I go back to LibreOffice, its preferences normally would be under tools options. So tools options is what you get when you go to preferences here. So it's a little bit quirky still, but when you're thinking the open source software is not built for GNOME and it's not built for Ubuntu. It's still kind of working and they have it, you know, where they're for the main programs building it in there. So that's a that's a pretty nice thing that they're working towards, towards getting it to be more user friendly. Okay, let's go ahead and take just a look at some of these other things. Yeah, LibreOffice has its double menu here. It has the menu there plus the menu up there. Other programs will do that. A little bit awkward, but this menu right here used to be on older versions of Ubuntu, and I don't know when they changed it. I haven't used it for a while. It used to be way over on this left-hand side. I like how they've moved it over, so it's more to where your windows are likely to be. I mean, it's not where this window is, but more where your windows are likely to be, so it's sort of right above it. Saving. Saving is a real nice thing, and of course, something that you have to do often. I'll go to Save As. If I start typing here, it puts it in the name. Excellent. But if I click to another folder, it thinks I'm doing a search. That in itself is a little odd to me. I shouldn't be doing a search unless I hit a hot key or hit that. And even stranger to me is if I click here and start typing, I don't even know what this is supposed to be doing. Haven't been able to figure that out. Again, only a few minutes of playing, but why does it type down there? Something I do really like about it though, say I'm in pictures, wherever, and I wanna to get to this folder right here, test. Now I could go to desktop, I could hit test, but maybe I have another window open someplace else and it's buried. I could just drag this here. Now, what am I likely going to be wanting to do here? Am I going to be wanting to move test into pictures? Probably not. It does have a little plus symbol right there on the dragged hand, which kind of indicates it might move it, but it doesn't. I let go and it knows to go to test. And if I save it there, oh, I have to give it a name. Oh, there we go, it has a name. I could save it there and now in test. Of course, that program should be there. That file, I should say, should be there. So that's a really nice feature, that drag and drop. Okay, the other thing I want to look at is installing applications. So let's go ahead and close these guys. We could close all of them. Installing seems to work much like it does on other Linux distributions. And there might be some organization things here in the searching. But I just did a search for Chromium. And it will go ahead and find anything with CH. Oh, C-H-R-O-M, and it should find that. Do I have to enter to get it to actually do the search? OK, 
Okay, it's not doing the search this time. Let's go ahead and redo that. A little odd. I don't know what the quirk is here. And now it's finding things with Chrome in them and Chromium, so I could install that. Pretty easy. But what if you have a program that isn't in the repository? That's when, let's go ahead and open this up. I've been playing around with a program called Windscribe recently. Let me go and show you on a Mac how it works. And on Windows, it would be similar to this. You would just go ahead and hit download. It would have an installer on Windows. On the Mac, it just goes ahead and downloads. It will take a couple seconds to download. And when it is done, you can see I've done this test a couple times or did it once before. Just double click on it. It opens up, taking a moment to open up the disk image. And once that opens up, literally all there is to installing it, they tell you right here to install Winscribe, drag the W icon to your applications folder. In other words, just drag it over. And in this case, I already have it there. I could replace it. I could keep both. I'm going to say stop. But that's all there is. It is then installed. I could then open it. I could then use it. I would, of course, need to have a subscription. Let's see what it is for Linux. And now maybe it's because it's in beta. But what we'll find, this is all too common on Linux still. I'm going to go to Linux. One, I have to pick which distro I'm in because each one might be a little different. And now here, Ubuntu 17.04. They actually don't have the newest one there. And look what you need to do. You need to create a free account. Okay, I needed to do that on a Mac also in order to use it. But then you have this right here. You have to go ahead and add the Winscribe signing key to apt, add the repository to your sources list, run apt, get update, and stuff. It just goes on. Most users are never going to want to do that. Now, they do have help, which you don't need to do. But most users are not going to want to have to copy and paste that, and even worse, have to type all of this in. Look at this. You have to even scroll back and forth on this. End of the world? No. But I wish Linux would work on making that easier. I know there are installers that can be made easier, but that's all too common. But that's not the fault of Ubuntu itself. I haven't shown this. Clicking right here, you have a calendar, you have notifications. Um, I haven't even looked to see what you could set for notifications, but just for basic use, this is just a good solid system, including using LibreOffice, which is not made for GNOME, and it just works well. So, impressed. I have to say, I know in some of my other videos, I've spoken poorly of some distros. This right here, quirks. Everything has quirks. It's fairly simple, not full feature, doesn't have everything that you might have in some other options. But it just works, and so I'm, I'm happy to see it, at least from my few minutes of testing, very impressed.